Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today. I'm really happy to share with you my experience and journey on how a degree from Grenoble called the management changed my life and took my career to three different countries. So I thought I would start by sharing a little bit of those countries that it sent me to. Um, what I will do throughout the presentation is share um, a little bit of my experience in each. And I will start with those four countries where my journey started. So it started in North America in California. I went to school in California State University in Chico. I graduated with a bachelor's in international relations. And I wanted to study something that would allow me to take um, education to a different country, a different place other than the US. And after I completed my bachelor's degree, I moved to Mexico City to join the Fulbright Commission. Uh, I was a program and promotional officer for the Fulbright Commission in Mexico City, where I worked for about five years um, in education that was an exchange between the US and the rest of the world. And when I was working for Fulbright, I had access to all these different universities worldwide that offer graduate school, um, master programs, DBA, et cetera. And I came across France and I heard a lot about Grenoble, mostly because of the rankings. Um, it's top six in France, top 25 in Europe, top 50 in the world. So it was really easy to find Grenoble worldwide. It was very present um, in the rankings that they do. It's a top school in Europe by the Financial Times in the European Business School, 16 in the world for the MSc in Finance, for Financial Times pre-exist Masters in Finance ranking, 49th in the world for Grenoble MBA, and that's according to the Times, um, top 50 and top 57 sorry, top 70 and top 75 for executive education. And then number 14 in the world for masters in international business, according to the Times. So it was really, um, I gravitated towards the university, towards Grenoble called the management because of the rankings. But the reason why I finally chose the school is because of the triple accreditation that it has. It puts Grenoble called the management among the top 1% of business schools worldwide that is triple accredited, which means that the recognition of the education and the quality of education that you will receive in this university is in the top 1% of business schools worldwide. So while I was still working for Fulbright, I decided that this was my best choice. Um, I also wanted to study in France, but I didn't speak French. And Grenoble Ecole de Management offered the choice of studying my entire master's in English while living in France. So it sounded like the perfect opportunity to continue my education. Um, I was also a social science major for my bachelor's degree. And when I entered the workforce, I understood how important it was to have a business background so that I could merge um, the social science aspect of working which is a lot of theory um, and it's not as practical as a business degree. So I decided to do a master's in marketing management because my background was in promotional officer for the Fulbright program. So I decided to join um, Grenoble and then I said, okay, where is Grenoble? I know it's in France, but it's a place that I've never really heard of. So I did a little bit of research and I found out that it's three hours from Paris. It's also three hours from the Mediterranean, two hours from Italy and one hour of Switzerland. So in the map that I'm sharing with you, um, that's exactly where it is, our campus in Grenoble. We also have a campus in Paris, but the one I attended was in Grenoble. And it's a small city. It's a population of uh, 540,000 um, people. 
out of which 64,000 are students. So it sounded like a dynamic place where I could continue um, exploring my academic career and then see where it took me. So then I decided to join Grenoble Ecole de Management, um, a business school in what is also known as the Silicon Valley of France. And I will tell you more about that later on. And one of the reasons I was attracted to this university is it's a highly international program. They have over 12 international campuses, 160 partner institutions. Um, but what really interested me was the real diverse nationalities in each class. So there's over 130 nationalities. I felt like I was studying in the United Nations <laughs> because there were so many students from different parts of the world that really prepared me for the jobs that I took after um, because in my in in my classroom I was dealing with classmates that came from China from South America from um, East um, Europe all over Europe Africa and basically all over the world um, we also have a very international staff most of the um, most of our teachers and instructors are from all over the world. There's a few that come from France, but most of them are visiting professors. So then I had the dynamic of having students that are international and also teachers and instructors that come from Canada, from the US, from all over the world. Um, and then we have 25,000 alumni worldwide which means that after I graduated, I have really good friends spread out all over the world um, because we met in Grenoble and then they went back to either their home country or some other country like I did um, to continue working and exploring their professional career, which then kind of puts the world at your fingertips because then you have this connection and this personal connection and also this professional link to all the students that you went to school with, your close friends, and also your instructors. Um, and then Grenoble is ranked number city, num second city for students in France. It's a very cultural hub. It has museums and it's very um, friendly for transportation and everything else. So it's a lovely place to be a student. My ride when I was doing my master's program was a bike. <laughs> so it was amazing to be able to ride all over the town in a bike and in the public transportation, something very different than the U.S. Um, and in other places where all you need to, you have to have a car. And I completed my master's in marketing. And then after I completed my master's, so the master's program is a two-year commitment. The very first year is an academic preparation. In the second year is for students to do an internship in their final thesis. It is during the second year that the university gives you the chance to study um, while you're doing your thesis and do an internship at the same time, or you can do six months and six months. I was fortunate enough uh, that through the career center that the university has, I found they post a lot of um, internships and job opportunities. And I was interested in doing an internship during my second year so that I could, one, get my foot in the door in the European um, workforce, and also to increase um, my chances of having a better thesis at the, end of the, at the end of my master's. So I sent my application to one of the many places that the Career Center uh, shares with the students in regards to opportunities for internships and I was able to get an internship in Paris in a technology company called Alcatel Lucent um, Enterprise. So um, as you can see in this picture I am the only woman in <laughs> a very male dominated industry which is intern technology. Um, Alcatel Lucent Enterprise is a company similar to Aruba that develops telecommunications all over the world. I did a six month internship as part of my program and then that led me to the ability to get a job offer from this 
um, this industry in the U.S. and in, in, in France to become a network partner programs director. So when I was doing my internship, I did my internship in the marketing department, and one of my mentors was working very closely with the network side of the business, and they saw in me some soft skills that they didn't find in other students, for example, the ability to work in a very international crowd. So in this picture, you can see um, we basically have my coworkers were from China, from Italy, from Holland, from Brazil, from the US, um, from Singapore, and from Norway. So my group, my core group of, in Germany, I forgot Ingo, and my core group of um, people that were reporting to me directly came from all over the world. And I have to say that the preparation that I got in the university, we're now called the management, is what really set the tone for me to join the workforce and apply everything that I had in my academic courses into my workforce. Because when I was going to the whole academic year that I was in Grenoble, we were interacting and doing uh, school school work and and um, dynamics where my classmates were very international. So the soft skills that I learned in how to deal with different cultural backgrounds and cultural awareness, um, interdisciplinary, that is also very significant when I joined the workforce because then Grenoble Ecole de Management prepared me to join a workforce that I wouldn't otherwise first have access to and second would know how to navigate if I hadn't had that opportunity with Grenoble. Um, the other thing that was amazing for me when I was uh, a student is when I was choosing what program to do and what school to choose, I realized that in France, you need a sponsor in order for you to do an internship during your second year. The University of Grenoble called the management offers that entire uh, process for a student to be able to apply for an internship, become their sponsors during their internship, so that the contract that a student has with the company that they work for is also done with the university. So Grenoble called the management is the sponsor for the student, and this gives um, very important support to our to students like me because then it's not just the student that becomes an inter that has no um, support from their university. Grenoble is their step up the whole during the whole internship to make sure that they could guide me um, to the program. <clears throat> I spend two years in Paris working for uh, Alcatel Lucent and then they offered me a permanent position in Italy. The program that we were developing when I was in France took a turn for the best and they decided to send me um, to Milan in one of the other headquarters that they had in Europe to lead uh, a sales program worldwide as the director um, for this sales uh, network partner program. And I, was, I worked in Milan for two years. Um, it was really interesting to be part of this group because as you can see in my other pictures, it was a very male dominated industry. Um, in Milani was no different, but I wanted to make sure we had some gender representation in my pictures. But still the people that I work with were mainly uh, male, were mainly engineers. However, and I'm not an engineer as I don't have a background in engineering. My background is in social science, as I said, I studied international relations in my bachelor's. However, what I learned at Grenoble allowed me to have the sensitivity to have the conversation with different people in business. Because, um, and I will go over uh, later about the courses that we have in a master's program that really prepare you to have conversations in the business world and to deliver business results that combine your background that might not necessarily be just business specific in a way that makes you bridge um, those gaps that other people might not be able to do because of the different backgrounds that we have. 
So Grenoble is one of the few universities for business that allows students like me um, at that time to get a master's degree in business with no previous master's, um, sorry, with no previous business degree prior to joining the master's. And what it does is this becomes an asset when you are um, joining the workforce because then you have this very unique understanding of the business and other parts that apply to business that other uh, other uh, profiles might not have. So Grenoble allowed me to go to um, Paris for two years and then Milan for other two years after I graduated from my master's. And then the third country back to the US to become um, the foreign officer manager based in San Francisco that now helps other students become um, what they want to become with the help of a master's degree from Grenoble. So <clears throat> let me tell you why um, Grenoble is such an um, outstanding place for people of different walks of life. So Grenoble called the management is more than just a school. It's a laboratory where the sky's the limit to invent the company and society of tomorrow. It's a testing ground, a place for experimentation, analysis, and unique combinations to solve complex problems. And that's why Grenoble called the management is now, we refer to it as a business lab for society. Um, as I said earlier, Grenoble is the French Silicon Valley. It is ranked in the top five most inventive cities in the world, which makes it a very unique place to be studying business. Um, it is home to major global technology companies such as HP, Microsoft, Philips, etc. And it's also the hub for a lot of startups. There are there's over 700 foreign owned companies in the region. And it's also a global center for technological innovation. So it's an international research center. It is the first European center for micro and nanotechnology. And there are many world renowned institutions for higher education and um, in Grenoble technology, industry and education collaborate together in many levels. And for me, this is what allowed me to then make the transition of a social science um, in education, working in higher education to working for technology and for the business, where my intention for joining the master's program was to understand how corporations worked that were different than nonprofit corporations that I had worked before joining my master's program. So let me tell you a little bit about the marketing, the MSc in marketing management. And I have information that's specific to this program but I will also talk a little bit about the other programs that the university offers, such as the MBA, the Master's in International Business, the MSc in Finance, in Luxury Management, and in International um, Human Resource Management, et cetera. So feel free to ask questions if you have any during um, this portion of the webinar. This is where we're gonna start to get a little more technical about the typical class and the requirements for me to share some um, tips for you when you're doing the, the, the admission process. So earlier I was talking about how being a student in Grenoble gave me access to a very international and diverse crowd. So this is a typical class. Um, the geographical origin, as you see, has people that come from Asia, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, the Middle East, Africa, North America, and South America. There are over 21 countries represented. And like I said, this is what allowed me to then join an international technology company because I wasn't, um, I was comfortable being in such a diverse and international uh, room where people had um, a lot of different work experience and also different expertise. Um, on average, our participants speak three languages, and that was my experience when I worked for Alcatelus and Enterprise, where the common language was English, but then if we had meetings um, that were only, uh, where our participants were from South America, then we would have those meetings in Spanish. And if we had people that were from France, we would have those meetings in French, um, and because I was based in Italy, 
if we had meetings where most of our uh, the people in there spoke Italian, then we would also have our official, you know, our work meetings in in Italian. So I had a taste of this when I was in the academic year in Grenoble because that's exactly how we would do our work um, in you know in teams, etc. If our teams had a, another language in common that was not English, then we would facilitate the work in that language that we all shared. Um, so then having access to a, a class. And I, I find it funny that I say typical class because this is not really a typical class anywhere else. This is a typical class in Grenoble. So having access to that diversity and excellence from the get-go starting your master's really sets you up in a specific path for you to later join an international um, work um, industry. So the MSc Marketing has is for people that have a strong desire to specialize in the marketing field. As I said, it's one academic year on site, full time. And then the second year is for you to fight to finalize your thesis and for you to get a um, an internship. So the core business courses that apply for this and other business programs that we offer is corporate finance, accounting, intercultural management and intercultural negotiations. So as I said earlier, the core business courses include an emphasis on intercultural management and the ability to work in places in, in places that are very diverse. And this is part of the program. Uh, like the, the way that the, the students come from different countries facilitates that intercultural management and ability to work in intercultural environments, but we also have core businesses, um, courses that focus on that. Um, the MSc Marketing Management has intense coverage of key areas in marketing. And in your screen, you can see some of the classes that are part of the first academic part of the master's program. And this really sets you in a path where you can have and a specialization if you're interested in marketing or if you're interested in finance where you get an approach to business in general and then you can also become a specialist in whatever area you wanted to do and this is also the case in an MBA an MBA has a different set of courses but it also offers you the chance to become a specialist in either marketing or um, finance so that when you graduate with your MBA, you have a, a master's in business administration, but then you also become a specialist in something. Um, in marketing management, and I keep talking about marketing management because this is a program that I completed in Grenoble, um, focuses a lot on digital marketing. And digital marketing, as we know, is becoming more and more relevant. Um, the digital analytics and content marketing where everything that we find is available on the web now and digital presence is just as key as physical presence, if not even more. Therefore, there is a very high emphasis on digital marketing in this marketing management program, but there's also very important emphasis in digital business throughout the rest of the, ma the master's programs that we offer. Now, when I say that Grenoble Call the Management prepares you for a successful marketing career, I mean it. It prepared me for a very successful marketing career. And like I said, um, the lecturers that we have and the instructors are very experienced marketers and academics. What I really enjoyed of this program is that we don't just have instructors that have a PhD in marketing. We have instructors that work as marketers that have a very um, recognized uh, journey professionally, and they come and tell us how it's done in the real world. So there is a combination, a very well um, and very uh, important combination between the academic where it's a theory and we learn about the business theories, and then also what it's like to be applied in the real world. So um, we, um, we get this chance of having instructors that come from the business world and not just the academics, and that makes a huge difference when preparing you for the marketing career. 
Now, when I say that I, my Grenoble called the management degree took me to three countries, I am not the exception. Um, as you can see, a lot of the, the students that graduate from this, 100% of them work internationally, which means that whether they go back to, um, whether they, they stay in Europe and, and find a, a job in Europe, if that's what they choose to do, <clears throat> or they go somewhere else, in the country that they wanted to do. 100% found employment within two months. And when I was doing my research on what university to go to, like I said earlier, my top, the, the main reason why I chose a university is because of the triple accreditation. And it also what convinced me to take a break from my professional career that I had started and had a very solid five-year career in Mexico City was the fact that graduates from this program have a really easy time finding employment within two months. Um, my internship was, I found my internship right after my summer break. Um, I completed the, the, the academic year in May, and then I took the summer break. I went abroad uh, outside of France, and I was doing the interviews actually when I was outside of France. Most of the interviews now and then were um, done through Skype, and I was able to find employment um, within the two months. Now, <clears throat> of course, another part that I was really interested in was what was gonna be my average salary. If I was investing in a private business school in France that required um, my living expenses in euros, and uh, a tuition. I wanted to understand what my salary was going to be after graduation. And um, this is, of course, an average salary. Um, some people make more, some people make less. This, uh, to me, when I was looking into what I wanted to do after graduating from my master's, was to at least duplicate what I was earning during my bachelor, when, you know, with only a bachelor's. And this is one of the reasons why I did it, and it worked out. Um, <clears throat> also, as you can see, 94% have jobs involving international projects. So like I said, when I started working in Paris for Alcatelus and Enterprise, my um, project had to do with worldwide uh, sales program. So because I had this experience in such an international um, classroom, I wanted to continue that in the workforce. So I'm not an exception again. This is 94% of graduates that continue to work in a project that involves um, some kind of international um, uh, you know, aspect to it. Now the top employers are <clears throat> HP, Google, uh, Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, and the top employers that are listed here are um, mainly are the ones where the, the, the students go to when they have um, an employer, but they also join a lot of startups, and the startups are not listed here. All right, let's go through the admission procedure, and I want to share with you as a student and also as a foreign officer manager, some of the tips that I would like you to take into account when you are applying. So the whole application is online. Everything is online. You have to scan and attach all the required documents. My recommendation is to start the application process early. We have rolling admissions, which means that there, we have deadlines every month or every twice a month. And I would encourage you to start the application as soon as you can. Some of the documents required, um, and in this case, if you are um, a native English speaker and have a bachelor's degree from a university in English that taught in English, you don't have to have the TOEFL or the IELTS or any of the other proof of English proficiency. We need your degree transcripts, a copy of your passport, and your resume. Um, <clears throat> as part of the application, we want to hear from your references, the professional and academic references. Please don't include any relatives or colleagues. Um, we want to make sure that this is a professional um, reference. And 
of course, let them know in advance. And one of the tips that I want to share with you for the motivational essays, of course, you have to write a motivational essay on your personal and professional objectives and then on your intercultural awareness. But I want you to think about your candidacy in a comprehensive, comprehensive approach. Ask yourself, what do you bring to the program? What is special about your story? And apply that both to your essay questions and to your resume. So the university takes an approach to the candidacies in a comprehensive way. We want to understand what you have done to now, what you want to do later, and how Grenoble can help you bridge that space between what you have done and where you want to go, because that's what Grenoble becomes for you. It becomes um, the vehicle for you to go to the next step. So when you're writing those essays, please take that into account. Now, Grenoble is one of the few schools, a handful of schools in France that allows American uh, students to use FAFSA. Our code is on, the, um, on your screen. <clears throat> we also have a lot of scholarships available to different nationalities. The Serger Bellinger Scholarship Program offers $10,000 to American students. Prodigy Loans allows you to take a loan without <clears throat> using very high interest rates that might apply in your, in your country. And then Campus Friends offers a list of different grants as well. I encourage you to check out our um, web page that has all the financial aid information because if you are a Mexican national, a Canadian, uh, an American national, the list of financial aid that is available for you is different. And we have financial aid either through scholarships or through loans for most nationalities. Um, I was actually a beneficiary from a very uh, generous uh, scholarship as a Mexican national. And this also allowed me to continue my education in Grenoble because of the financial aid that Grenoble offers. So Grenoble has a lot of um, agreements with different countries to offer financial aid. So I highly encourage you to take a look at that. When to apply. As I said, first come basis, um, the places are limited. So I encourage you to apply as soon as you can. I would hate for students to not get accepted because the program is full and not because they're not qualified. Um, the deadline for applications, if you're not a European, then you need to have your acceptance by April which means that you have to send your application as soon as you can so that we can continue and do the visa process um, with your admission by the end of April. You will usually um, receive a, a notification about your acceptance within three weeks of submitting your application. And if you have missing documents, if you haven't graduated yet, if you're going to graduate in May or you have a specific case, please contact me. We can submit your application as is to aim for a conditional acceptance. It is possible to get a conditional acceptance. We just have to be very careful on how we craft your application um, to make sure that regardless of the fact that you are missing a document or you don't have a specific requirement, that we can aim for that conditional acceptance. OK, so we have, um, I want to make sure that we have enough time for the questions that you have sent us. Um, in your screen, you have all my contact information, the emails that you can write me to, and you can um, send me also a request on LinkedIn. What I do as a foreign officer manager, I'm based in San Francisco, but I give advice to students all over Amer the Americas. Um, and if you are not from the Americas and you want to receive help from one of our foreign officers, you can also write to me and I will send you to your office, um, your, your country representative based on where you are. So feel free to write my information and I will leave this um, on the screen as we go through the questions. So Daraj, if you are ready to start reading some of the questions, we can start whenever you are. <clears throat> okay, it was a pleasure to uh, hear your presentation. Now, <clears throat> We go to the questions, and uh, I will ask all of the attendees to uh, take a look at their uh, navigation panel. You can find the option to 
ask questions on it. And you can type in any questions that uh, you have to, uh, to Tanya. Uh, I will start with a question uh, by, uh, by Georgia S. I really enjoyed your photos. It seems like a very dynamic program. What was your favorite part of your educational experience? Um, it is a very dynamic program. Um, I wanted to share with you guys some of the games that they have at GEM. Um, like I said, it's a lab for society. We have this game that was developed in Grenoble that um, it's called Tech It. And it's basically a way that Grenoble includes in their teaching to encourage innovation and entrepreneurship. And we do it through a thing called Serious Games. So. It's very dynamic because then we basically have, this is just part of the things that we take into account when we're learning as part of the academic curriculum. It's called Serious Games and it has a, basically you play a game to encourage innovation and this is how the, the entire uh, program is approached. So we, it's, it's a lab for society where my favorite part was the fact that it was very hands-on. We have live business cases uh, as part of the program where we actually do either um, a business project for a real, uh, a real company that needs to do a marketing campaign or that needs to do something specific, and they give it to us. And then we have to present it to the corporation that hired us. So then we do as part of the as part of the project, as part of the academic part, we do um, consulting. So then when we start looking for jobs, it feels like you're already experienced in that because we did it as part of the program. So I would say my favorite part of the master's program was how dynamic the program itself is. Because what I wanted to tell you as well is that it's very different. For example, for me, it was very different than my bachelor's degree. My bachelor's degree, you had a class for six months, and you went to class a few times a, a, a week, and your curriculum was like that. In Grenoble, we have courses that are more like seminars. You could complete an entire course in two, three weeks' time, because we had a visiting professor from Australia or from South Africa that gave us an entire course in a three weeks' time. So it's very dynamic in the sense that you are learning uh, a specific course, you know, and, and most of them are core business modules in a very short amount of time. And this makes the semester very dynamic because then you don't have a class for the whole semester. You can complete a, an entire course in a matter of three weeks. So the course itself, the, the academic portion of it is also very dynamic. That, I would say that's my favorite. That was my favorite part academically. My other favorite part, more um, in a more personal way, was the fact that I was able to make uh, some of my best friends in places that I would have never otherwise um, have access to. One of my best friends is from Belarus, the other one's from Colombia um, in Norway. And now I feel like the, the world is still at my fingertips because I know people all over the world and um, it just shrinks everything to having it in my palm now. <laughs> yes. Okay. That would be it. Yes, definitely, definitely a very wide international network, which is quite useful when it comes to also looking for a job, I suppose. Um, I would also like to uh, ask a question by Hajar. Hajar Habibi is asking us, uh, how can I enter Grenoble? How can I, uh, what are the, the exams that I need to take? That's a really good question. Thank you for asking. Um, Grenoble and Calder Management is also one of the few universities that does not require the GMAT or the GRE. Um, in specific programs such as the MBA and finance, if a student does not have specific business um, experience, then we look at it case by case where if a student needs to prove their readiness in uh, quantitative courses, 
such as accounting and, and other business courses that require uh, quantitative uh, preparedness than we do. Otherwise, the only exams that you would need to take are the proof of English proficiency, and then that would do through a TOEFL or a um, IELTS. And if you graduated from a university that was taught in English and your degree is in English, then that gives you a waiver for the test of English. Now, how do you enter Grenoble? Like I said, you, and I can go to it um, on my presentation, your entire application is online. You go to ggsb.fullfabric.com and you have access to the beginning of your application. You have to create a username and a password so that you create your file. And then you'll, you'll see all the sections that are part of the application. You have to um, attach your scan documents, such as your degree, your um, test in English, etc., and including the references and your essays, it's all done online. So we are here to help you uh, complete that application. So be sure to get in touch with us and we will do a follow-up email as well. But what we do as country representatives all over the world is to make sure that students have an easier time navigating our online application. Um, I also can help you understand better which program is the best fit for you. Sometimes a student thinks that an MBA is better um, than finance. And then when, when you uh, share with me what your future plans and your career path is, sometimes that means that you have to take another program than you originally thought. Um, so one of the beauty, I say beauty because I think it, it is, about the programs that we offer in Grenoble is that if somebody, for example, wants to study um, luxury, there are very few masters that offer that specialization in luxury management. Um, and if somebody wants to study MBA, that's also one of the things that Grenoble offers because you study your MBA, but then you also become a specialist in one of those uh, main business courses such as finance. So um, I would be happy to help you out with um, which program is the best fit for you and to navigate the entire online application. So um, again, this is where you would go to begin your file. It's ggsb.fullfabric.com. And um, I will go to my information so that you can send me a note letting me know if you um, want some further advice in your application to make sure what, what I like to make sure with students that I coach is, you know, the university, like I said, takes a look at the candidates in a comprehensive, comprehensive way. So I want to make sure that when students apply, they stand out from the hundreds of applications that we receive. And the only way to do that is to make sure that you're asking your references to the right people. So, you know, we, we have the, the, the list of applicants that we receive have a very similar GPA, have outstanding, um, a lot of things are outstanding about them. What we want to make sure we get is what is different in your case? What is this, the, what can you bring to the, to the school and to the classroom that it's going to make a difference other than your high grades and nationality and uh, maybe uh, native tongue, et cetera. So we want to make sure that we highlight those, that we help you highlight those things that the university is going to be really interested in uh, having students. Great. Thank you very much for this. I see that uh, there are more questions uh, popping out. Um, regarding the uh, studies and more specifically finance, um, how much uh, are the fees for financing the uh, your program is a question by Ahmed Al Haris. So the and, yeah. And another one that is also connected to financing is how to get scholarships. Probably those two could be grouped somehow together. Yeah. Well, um, the 
Each program has a different tuition fee for MSc in finance. It's about 23,000 euros for the two year program. And it varies, each program varies a little bit. Um, some programs have a study trip to a different country. And if it does, it's usually a higher tuition because it includes the cost of a trip. For example, um, the, the MSc in innovation and entrepreneur Innovation, entrepreneurship, and strategy are coming to the U.S. Um, for their study trip. They're coming to San Francisco and the Silicon Valley for one week to do um, visits in Google and SAP and Facebook, etc. And the cost of this trip is included in um, in the tuition. So it's about twenty-three thousand euros for most of the MSCs. The MBA is a little bit higher at thirty thousand. Um, it's still a very um, good value for your money and the way that you get scholarships scholarships depend on your nationality um, a lot of them a lot of countries offer um, scholarships for their nationals for example Mexico offers um, a very generous scholarships to study abroad the US allows you to take uh, financial loans FASA from the federal government in the US Canada also offers a lot of other different scholarships and the the school also offers internal scholarships so we have scholarships for academic excellence um, for different programs and if you send me a note I can share with you the link to where you can find all those different links for the scholarships because it's really important and I understand that was my case um, I wanted to study abroad, I wanted to go to France, but of course I wasn't sure that I was gonna be able to sponsor myself. I was self-sponsored, so my parents didn't necessarily have all the means to say, yeah, we'll continue to pay for your education. So I wanted, I needed to find different um, sources of funding. There is also another scholarship that offers, that is offered by the French government called the Eiffel Scholarship. And that's usually given to students in developing countries. Um, and so that one also offers a very generous um, uh, scholarship. And you can always mix and match different scholarships with loans to make sure that you can cover all your tuition fees and your living expenses. Now, you also have to take into account that only the first year, it's um, you need, you're required to be in Grenoble or in Paris or in any of the of the campuses that you choose and the second year you can do it either from your home country or from any other place so this can also help you plan and reduce your cost taking into account that only the first year is the one that needs to be you need to be in France the second year you can be anywhere you want great thank you very much um, another question that is uh, also related to financing and to uh, to the to the opportunity to the scholarship opportunities and the, the financial opportunities offered by the Canadian government. Um, Liam Bond is asking us. Um, I'm interested in the Canada scholarships for can Canadian students. Uh, can you do you know about them and can you tell me a little bit more about them? And then we'll go to the next question for. Uh, from Jet Haidar. Okay. Um, yes, I know about that scholarship. So let's please get in touch. Uh, I'll make sure I follow up with you to let you know about the, sc the scholarship for Canadian students and how you can apply that to Grenoble. Um, I can give you more details um, offline. Okay, perfect. A quick one by Hajar Habibi. Do I need to know French to study? Um, you don't. When I moved to France, I only knew how to say bonjour, and that was uh, my uh, French level. Another really awesome thing about the master's program is that it offers, as, and it's included in the tuition, language courses. So the entire program is organized around giving the opportunity to students um, to study a second language or a third language or a fourth language. Most of us chose French because we wanted to, you know, have the ability to 
speak French when we enter the workforce. So you don't have to. If you do, then you will have an easier time adjusting in France and doing everything that you need to do by becoming a resident in France, but you don't have to. The university um, walks you with, you know, kind of walks you through the learning process of French, and then it's up to the students to, it's not mandatory. So if you already speak French, you can learn a different language, you can learn German or Spanish, um, but if you don't speak French and you want to, as part of your academic program in that first year, the university offers that and it's already included in your tuition. So it's a great um, way to make sure that you do learn French because the more, you know, the, if you are uh, fluent in French, you will also have a higher chance of um, obtaining an internship or a job in France. And so I highly encourage students to um, take advantage of that and maybe even start preparing while they're still in their home country before leaving. So I did take um, an intensive course before moving to France and then you get there and then you realize that you still have a long way to go. Um, but you don't have to. All the courses are taught in English and the university offers the chance for you to learn France, uh, French as you during the whole academic year. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you very much. Um, I suppose that uh, with the extracurricular activities do help a lot in, uh, in learning the language. So there's the next question by Jad Haidar is uh, concerning extracurricular on-campus activities. With this compressed one-year program, will you have a master's student uh, the, enough time to engage in campus clubs and activities? That's one of the questions. And the other question, in addition, is the networking experience facilitated in a small city like Grenoble, and is in such a co and in such a compressed program? So the answer to that is yes. Um, it's all about time management, and that's one of the soft skills that you learn in uh, during the academic course. Grenoble is really close to the French Alps, and the thing to do in when you're in Grenoble is to go skiing or to go uh, snowboarding, and if you, and that's part of the, that's part of the academic experience as well, um, learning how to manage your time to make sure that you have enough space and room in your weekends to take advantage of the beauty of France and to travel all over Europe. Um, part of the visa that you receive as a student, uh, the French visa, grants you access to the whole Schengen zone, which means that you can travel to all those countries that belong to that zone without having to apply for a visa. So you can go to Spain, you can go to Italy, you can go to Germany, Switzerland, etc., for what weekend trips. Um, coming from the U.S., you know, you drive here for six, seven hours, and you're still in California. Over there, you drive for three hours, and like I said, you're in Italy. Other three hours, and you are in Germany. And so it does the the it is a very heavy uh, academic curriculum, and it does take a little bit of getting used to, especially if you are working and then you go back to the student life, it does take some adjustment. But I believe that part of the benefits of studying in Grenoble, that the courses are designed in a way that they force you to improve your time management um, so that you make sure that you have enough time for both, for the academic part and for the fun part. Um, because that's also where you do a lot of the networking um, you want to make sure that your network is not just academic, but that you know enough people in the town. Um, maybe if you're interested in technology, that then you can join one of the uh, tech uh, corporations that are in Grenoble. And a way to do so is, you know, by engaging in in the town. Now the town makes it easier because it's such a student-oriented um, city. So there, it, there are a, a very good number of international students, um, which then allows you to put yourself out there and enjoy the other extracurricular activities that um, Grenoble offers. So I would say yes, and I would encourage um, anyone that wants to do a master's program to make sure that they incorporate the fun part um, into their experience. And Grenoble allows you to do that by learning how to do time management well <laughs> uh, because it is a heavy uh, it's a heavy workload. 
Okay, sounds quite interesting. Um, so we we reviewed the fun part of the program. Now let's go for the internships. Uh, Maria Perez is asking us, uh, can students decide among few internships or you select the program for each particular student? So I always thought of Grenoble as um, they would give you the keys and then you decide what door to open. Um, you can select from any internship that is available. The Career Center has great um, relations with companies in France and all over Europe. So what they do is post any opening of internships that they have. Um, but then at the end of the day, it's up to the student to decide what industry they go to. And if they rely just on the career center of the university or if they go through their own networks to um, do their internship. The internship can be done anywhere in the world, in any industry you want. And this allows you great flexibility to say, I already have an opportunity maybe back home or in another country. And the university allows you to take the time during those two years and have access to your internship. So the answer to that is it's up to you. Whatever and wherever you want to do your internship in, you can do so as part of the program. So it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool in that regard. Okay, that's good to hear. Uh, there is a question by I Ivan Nedelchev. Uh, hi, what is the typical time frame to complete MBA or MSc in finance? Are there any data science and or fintech modules in the program? Okay, so the typical time frame is two years, both MBA and an MSc in finance is a one academic year that has to be done in Grenoble or in Paris, depending on the campus that you choose. And the second year um, where you complete your thesis and your internship. Um, so the internship is not mandatory. Like I said, we highly encourage students to do it, but they can choose, they can opt out if they don't want to do an internship. What they do have to finalize is um, their thesis or their final project that um, in MBA, in a lot of cases, it becomes a business uh, a business plan. If somebody was interested in, in starting their own business or um, they came with already something built and they wanted to um, use this degree to further their academic preparation for that, they can do so as well. It doesn't have to be an academic thesis. Um, the program does include um, um, data science and fin technology. Um, I can give you more details on the syllabus of the program offline to make sure that you they have the courses that you are interested in. I'm guessing, um, Ivan, that you have a specific course that you want to learn about. That's why you're asking the question about data science. Um, so I can definitely give you more details on the specific. Um, and if you're, de if you're debating between doing an MBA and an MSc in finance, I can share with you the main differences um, academically speaking, if you if that's what's going to make you decide which program to go for. Um, most of the programs include a course that has to do with data science and data management um, because that's what, you know, nowadays, for example, for the international um, human resources management, um, there's a class that they're adding about um, data knowledge and basically management of knowledge. So there's all this data, and then how do you turn that data into information? So um, that's a course that it's taught, of course, differently based on the specific approach of each of the master's program, but that's definitely a business core um, class that is included in most of them. So good question. Great. Uh, Maria is asking us, uh, do you need recommendations from my employer, I suppose, for the application? Ideally so. Um, we, depending on the program that you go for, and I, and I want to mention right now that um, there is a, um, an, a minimum requirement of work experience for some programs. For example, for the MBA, you have to have 
at least three years of work experience. And there are other programs where you don't need work experience to be able to apply for the program. And for those programs that do require a minimum of uh, years of experience, then we highly encourage a recommendation from your employer because we want to understand how you, um, you know, how you are in the work environment. And ideally, because we need two references, ideally you would do one from your employer and one academically. So what we want to have is, you know, the more that we, that we learn about the candidate in the application, the easier it is for the admissions um, to decide if you're eligible and if you uh, can be part of a program. So the best way to do that is by showing us a little bit about you from different sources, in uh, and that would be from your employer. Now, bear in mind that it doesn't have to be your current employer. If you had an, an employer maybe the first year of your professional career that had a great experience with you, we would take that. We want to make sure that your employer has positive things to say about you. And if they don't, then we can we have to look for an alternative. But yes, we do need from your employers, not your current one, but we need one from an employer that is going to give us your the highest recommendation for you. Okay. And you know, please be sure, Maria, to contact us so that we can help you um, navigate that reference process um, to make sure that the two people that you're choosing are your best um, your best choices. Okay, great. Um, another one by Maria. Uh, do you have scholarships or loans for European students? Just quickly, I suppose that uh, it was mentioned before, but to specify for European students. Um, yes, there are a lot of uh, scholarships that are available for European students. Again, in this case, they would be specific to each nationality. Um, they, you know, there, there are some countries that offer um, specific programs if they if, if their nationals go abroad. Um, so contact us again to tell us what country you come from, um, what nationality you hold, so that we can give you more details on the scholarships that are available for European students, specifically to your country of origin. Okay, perfect. There is a question here by uh, Ina. She wants to know, uh, you said that you are a coach. Do you prepare applicants to make their applications strong? Yes, um, that is what we do um, as country managers. We want to know what your what your journey is, we want to identify your strengths so that when you uh, when you submit your application, we highlighted the right things in your application. Now, um, you can imagine Grenoble being among the one percent business schools worldwide that has triple accreditation. Are um, the, the number of applicants that we receive have to go through a screening process in order for students to gain admission. So what we do as foreign office managers is to make sure that you are highlighting the right things in your profile. So we can help you decide the program that best fits for your future plans, as well as making sure that your essays reflect the right things that you want to uh, show the university. Um, and we want to make sure that the entire application on you um, whether that is your degree and your references and your essays and the way that you fill out the application is the best candidacy that you can put forth. So um, please contact us to make sure that we do that. Now, there's something really important that I have to tell you. There is no fee. Um, there's no fee for the coaching services that we do. We are part of the university. We work for the university. And the reason why we have country managers all over the world is because, um, as most of you know, the, the education systems are very different in different parts of the world. So we want to make sure, for example, in my case, I studied my bachelor's degree in the US, and then I worked in Mexico City. Um, so because I focus in North America, I also know a lot about the Canadian system 
to make sure that those students that I help along are getting the information that they um, need in order for them to complete their application. So we have an office manager in Europe that also does the same thing for European um, nationals. We have one in India, we have one in China, um, we have one in the Middle East, and then we also have another one in South America to make sure that we understand the academic background of a student because we have academic experience and professional experience in that education and that system uh, that is specific to, a, to, a, to a, a country and that we can translate that into the French system to make sure that the student is doing what is best for them. Now, um, so yes, please contact us. We would be happy to, uh, to help you navigate that online system. And we don't only uh, assist you in the application process, we will assist you all the way to until you start your program. And then once you get to Grenoble Ecole de Management, they have different services for international students. Um, they have something called Aloha, where they help students find housing and navigate the visa process once you already are in France, so that you can also be, um, you know, receive help while you're there. So we are your per se, your local connection before you get to France. And we want to make sure that that ride and journey in the application is as smooth as possible. Um, but we do work for Grenoble called the management. We are part of the admission um, department. So um, it's important for you to understand that, that part. That's why your services are free. Mm -hmm. Great. We are approaching the end of our webinar and I will be asking one last question. Mm -hmm. um, and I would like to uh, encourage anyone who has a question for Tanya to uh, type in a question in the, in the questions tab. And uh, the last question for now is um, how important are the test results for the scholarship decision or admissions decision by Maria. Okay. Um, like I said before, the university takes a look at your candidacy in a comprehensive way. Um, the result of your exams are going to matter for the MBA and for finance. Um, if you don't have professional experience in finance or in business and you want to join the MBA, then the university will require you to have a minimum on the GINA of 500 or 550 um, to make sure that you have the strength in the quantitative part of the business. In other, in other ones, um, we look at your application as a whole uh, in a comprehensive way. So we can, if you have low scores in a specific exam, um, we can help you improve how your candidacy looks. The only one that is going to be really important is to make sure that you have the minimums in the test of English. Um, so the English proficiency, you do have to hit the minimum required in order to send your application. Um, however, if you do not, we can talk about sending your application with the results that you have, with the possibility and the commitment to take the exam again to improve your scores. And that's only for the test of English. Um, it, well, the same applies to the GMAT or the GRE for, for other ones. Um, now, the scholarships depend on what you're applying for. We have a scholarship for excellence in the GMAT. If you don't have a good score in the GMAT, then you wouldn't be applying to that scholarship. You might be applying to um, a different scholarship that doesn't focus entirely in, in one of those requirements. Um, so again, the university takes a look at applications comprehensively, which means that we take a look at everything, your references, your professional experience, if any, um, what you studied, and also what your future plans are. So um, we want the entire picture of, like I said, what you've done, what you wanna do, and how Grenoble is gonna help you gap, um, you know, mend that gap by becoming the vehicle to take you to your future goals. Um, so before we go, I wanted to let you know that, you know, GEM is um, on all the social platforms. We have Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram. You can uh, visit um, Grenoble 
slash social hub to have the access to all of those different links. We are, um, we do have social media presence, so make sure you follow us um, on all of those. And then again, I leave my um, contact information so that any other questions that you can think of after the webinar, after everything sinks in, then um, um, you can you can contact us. We will be happy to follow up with you.